okay, here's the part as provided to me. They didn't have a lathe at centerline that could do the milling and turning simultaneously on this part. And I can't really turn a part that small on the Integrex, so they did the turning first. And they're giving it to me because they, they have no other way to do the milling on it exactly. And I was going to do this in my garage on the little Haas mill, but when I went to go turn the machine on, there's a malfunction in the servo drive of the A-axis, so I said, well, I'll do it on the Mazak here. It's kind of a little part for the Mazak, but we'll get it done here. So what, what I'm doing here is making a, a arbor or, or a mount for this uh, little uh, six-jaw chuck that I originally bought a long time ago. As you can see, my uh, surface footage is probably a little too high. This is a piece of 4340 that's already been heat treated to a commercial heat treat. So I'm kind of turning it a little faster than I should there. I was trying to run it dry too, so for, for the video's sake. But anyway, this little chuck, I originally bought it for um, the grinder to resharpen little small diameter drills so I wouldn't need a bunch of different collets and everything. And I could just chuck on the drills. But I never really used it on the grinder and so I had it here sitting around and I thought it might work good for this setup and you'll see later why. So I'm just turning the first end of this um, shank like thing for the small chuck. I have to mount it in the machine somehow here to do what I want to do. You'll see I'm just drilling a through hole. This is a, a drill I had around. I think it's a 980 thousandths diameter drill. I don't really need this through hole for the job I'm doing but I thought it might be good just to make this a uh, fixture for the chuck so I could do other things in the future maybe. So then I've got to, um, I didn't have a lot of these tools already in the tool changer that I needed so I had to reset them up. I'm going to gun drill for three six millimeter screws to go all the way through this thing to mount the chuck onto the arbor. So I'm drilling a start hole there. Then I'm going to set set up the um, gun drill. I think this is a, a number 250 or .257 drill, F size drill. I think I just happen to have this already there for a job I've been doing, so I used it. This is a gun drilling. Uh, I'm going to guess, but I think I was running at 3,500 RPM and and. Uh, four ten thousandths of an inch or point zero 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 four feed per revolution if I remember right and that seemed to work pretty good in this material gun drilling uh, works pretty good if you just don't try to feed the drill too fast I think that's the mistake a lot of people make they feed the drill at too high a feed rate Gun drills like slow feed rate and just a slow constant feed in like a G81 cycle is what I use. Also it's got high pressure coolant through the spindle. Okay then I gotta mill a couple of counter bores, or three counter bores I should say for the um, heads of the screws because I couldn't get screws long enough to go all the way through so I mill these counter bores about 800 thousandths deep. Pretty simple there. So anyway, I know I'll have this question, and I think this the brand of this little chuck I'm using is a Bison brand. I, I don't know the part number offhand, but it's it's a little chuck that they make apparently to go on a drill sharpening. Um, machine of some sort. That's what it's intended to use for. It's not an inexpensive chuck. I think the thing costs like $1,200 for this little chuck. It's, it's kind of expensive. 
but it's a, it's a precision, a little precision chuck. Now, now that's that's the first end, just so I could put it in these soft jaws in this chuck you see already in the four jaw chuck. And now it's important that this thing runs pretty true, because I'm going to indicate on that whenever I put it back in the chuck. And uh, also I'm turning a shoulder that the, that the chuck references on when I'm doing this turning on this side so I want it to run true so I have something to indicate whenever I mount this thing in the machine. Now it would have been better but I didn't want to take the time to because I didn't have chuck jaws and everything to turn like a dovetail mount on the back of this arbor kind of like I have this three jaw chuck in the, in the bigger four jaw chuck. That's a better way to do it. But I, I didn't have an, another set of jaws and I didn't want to modify the ones I have in the chuck because I'm using them on another job. I'm just trying to kind of figure out how much stock I want to take off the end here and where to set my Z0. Okay, now I'm going to turn the other end of it indexing the insert here. Uh, it turns out this wasn't the best grade of insert. You'll see when I try to turn this material I didn't. It was just an insert that was already in the tool so I was using that but it's not really holding up very well. But even still I continue on try to turn it I even put a new one in there. I'm, I, figured it was going to make it through there but as you'll see here in a second it it kind of fails about that far into the roughing cycle so then I decided to change to a better insert for the steel I don't recall what grade it's a, it's a Sumitomo insert it's probably like a 3000 something grade I can't remember and because it left that imperfection where it broke the insert I'm going to just run the rerun the roughing cycle again. I'm trying to run it dry here so you can see it in the video. Okay, now because that insert broke, I'm going to re-indicate the part cuz it kind of knocked it out of whack and I want this to run true to that OD that I already turned from the first side. I wish I had those screws like Robin Renzetti put on his chuck it would have made this a lot easier when you adjust a, a, a set true chuck it's it's not good to tighten the screws real tight as he explains in his video on that subject because it does distort the body of the chuck so I just kind of tighten them to move the chuck and then I back off the tension on them I don't leave them real super tight because it distorts the, like, like Robin was saying, it distorts the body of the chuck and it makes everything run out of whack when you do that. So I just use the screws to move. Oh, here I'm, I had the wrong tip radius on the insert, so I had to put a new one in and set the tool. Um, so I just use the screws to move the chuck only and then I back off the tension on them and leave them only snug. I gotta make it fit the counterbore in the chuck here as close as possible. Don't want any play that are... I want it just like a metal, uh, you know, a slide-on snug fit, which is what I'm going for here. So I'm liking the way that is now. Now I have to take this whole thing out of the chuck to put the chuck on it anyway but I also have to turn something else before I set this up but this is the basic setup the way it's gonna look without the the um, tail end support yet so that's the arbor for the small th six jaw chuck now I have to make a um, what you might call a female center the part has um, tapered ends on the on each end, as you saw in the first picture of it. But the ends aren't exactly 60 degrees, unfortunately. So I can't just run a center drill in here and be done with it. 
So I'm going to turn this, and then I'm, I am going to center drill it with a small center drill, which all these tools I didn't already have set in the tool changer, so I'm having to put them in and touch them off, as you see in the video here. And then I got to come in with, and I, I had a 60 degree engraving tool which you'll see in a second here, and I, and I programmed it just to tip the B-axis at five degrees so that I put the angle, the angle on the ends of the part is 70 degrees actually. So I have to have five more degrees per side of angle from a center drill. So I thought the easiest way to do this was just be to use this 60 degree engraving tool, a single flute engraving tool, and just uh, tip it at the five degree angle and rotate the c-axis and that seemed to work all right now you put the chuck jaws back on and put the whole thing back together and and uh, get things indicated in now it's pretty important that everything runs true here of course because the part is so small and any kind of kind of run out on a small part like this really can cause you problems. Now I was indicating it this way. I don't know that I showed it in the video, but this kind of, I ran into trouble a little bit with this because I didn't do the turning on these parts and there's a small amount of run out between one end of the part and the other and I'm chucking on one end and then there's that shoulder in the middle of the part and then the other end and, and I was indicating it here to get everything running true, but it turned out that this was um, not the best way to go about it because the um, this part actually ran pretty true so I wasn't too bad off but there was other parts that ran out between the two turning ends if you will and it kind of caused me a problem in the end I had to indicate it in a little differently so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this center thing and I can't of course use that big hydraulic tailstock because it's going to smash this little part even if I turn the pressure way down it, it just wouldn't be the right setup and I don't have any kind of female center for it anyway so I'm going to take these uh, jaws and put these other jaws I used for a previous job in my um, manual steady rest I guess I'll call it and uh I'm going to hold that center thing in it. Now you can see the, the reasoning. I, I went with the chuck like this instead of a collet chuck. I have some collet chucks with straight shanks on them I use in the milling tools. But, and that, you know, with an ER collet of some sort. But the problem with that is, and you'll see later when I actually run the parts, is I. I couldn't get the parts in and out. I don't want to move that center, you know, that center, that female center when I get it clamped in the tailstock, I mean in the, not tailstock, but the steady rest. I don't want to move it once I get it lined up with the part. So here, here I'm just boring it out a little better for the one inch diameter with a one inch end mill. That piece of stock I'm using, I think it's just a piece of 17.4 pH that I had lying around. And I want to actually clamp this thing in the steady rest there and get it lined up with the part. So here I'm indicating, kind of indicating and fiddling around with it a little bit, trying to get. But see, this is where I ran into that runout issue because I took the part in and out of the chuck. And you see how I'm taking it in and out of there. And I'm like, why is it running out now? And it didn't dawn on me till later that there was run out between the ends of the parts so I I had because I didn't do the turning I didn't know that and I had to re-indicate it I, I didn't show it in the video but that's what I did and so I got everything running as true as possible the tolerance on the milling I'm doing is plus or minus five thousand so it's not super darn critical I just trying to get it as good as I can no sense in making it any better than I have to. Now here's the milling and I had difficulty photographing this so I, I put that um, simulation from the, the um, 
cam software up there on the corner of the screen so you can kind of see what's happening here. So the these flats I'm milling with the side of the end mill. And that's all that gets done on this side this end of the part, I, I guess you'd say it's just some flats and they and they blend off of the part with a radius, so that was the easiest way to do it. Now you can see why this works because I can open the chuck and take the part out and then put the next one in without disturbing the, the tail center support. And also that's ideal because the dimensions on this part actually come from the, the, the tapers or the, on the end. Not the end of the part, but the, where that taper is. So this kind of works ideal to stop the part on the taper itself is the reason I was doing this. And I can change the parts just by opening the chuck and get the part out between the jaws of the chuck. You couldn't do that with a collet chuck if you used a collet chuck in this situation. So that's the, this, obviously you can see that this little chuck is manually operated, you just turn it. And there's some spanner wrench holes in the OD of it, but I didn't need to chuck it that tight to make all this work. So that, now you're seeing it again, just milling the three flats on the first end. open the chuck and you can just open it enough to tip the part away from that center tail center piece I guess you'd say and get the next one in and just hold it some pressure up against there also I don't want too much pressure on the the um, female center either because the part has a certain finish requirement and I didn't want to mark the the taper has a finish on it I don't know what this thing does. It's I think it's some kind of needle in a in a solenoid valve maybe. I don't know. Now the the next end I have to hold in alignment and it and it turned out really kind of convenient that the chuck jaws are pointy enough on this part to where two of them will will set on one of the flats at a time. So with this six jaw chuck it'll hold the part in alignment with the three faces chucking on the three flat faces I already milled. I'm just indicating here and making sure that this thing repeats going in and out of this chuck good enough. Remember my tolerance is like plus or minus five so this is plenty good enough. And what I'm ch checking at here just to make sure that and I'm going to take it in and out of the chuck a few times and rotate it and uh, check the various the various faces. I'm actually turning at 120 degrees each time I'm chucking on it here just to make sure it chucks the same. And also I ran, the, I don't know if I showed it in the video here or not, but I ran the indicator across the flat that's in the chuck to make sure it repeats as far as the rotational um, alignment, if you will, or, or orientation. It's a little bit tricky to chuck it like this. You have to be careful. It would be it would be easy to have it a little bit off to make sure that you can kind of feel it as you tighten the chuck, how it lines up with the flats. There's a enlargement of how the jaws hit on the part. See two of the jaws hit on each of the flats. I'd like to say I planned it that way but I actually didn't plan it that way. I thought I was going to have to indicate these things but it turned out that worked really nice and the chuck jaws are accurate enough so that it repeats plenty accurate. See there's a little, there's like a little bit less than an half a thousand or a thousand I don't know that but that's close enough for the plus or minus five I'm not sure why that would be different on on one now I mean I'm going to indicate the flat where the chuck jaws 
chucking on it. I already set the CX as zero, but I just want to make sure that it repeats. And you can see it, it's pretty straight. Plenty straight enough for the five thousandths tolerance. I couldn't get I couldn't get the um, hammer probe on the end of the part, so I'm I'm edge finding that little shoulder and back calculating to the end of the part from my zero. Now here's the milling on this end. Again, you can't see much with all that coolant, so I put that little uh, graphic simulation up there, kind of get an idea of what's happening. This is a 16th inch end mill. I think I'm running at 9,000 RPM. And this is kind of like a, a trochoidal type of milling cycle, slotting it out, and then just some normal finish passes on the face and the walls right there. And it's also doing kind of a trochoidal roughing the top of the radius there. Trichoidal slotting, if you will, right there. And then a, a normal finish pass, a pocket finish pass on the faces here and the walls. Here's another look, a different angle, but you can see it, it. There's so much coolant, you really can't see what's happening too good. I was trying to get some video of this, but it's the part is so small and I have to have the camera just right up there, the, the GoPro camera that I use and I've even zoomed it in here on the camera trying to get closer but it's just almost impossible to get a good uh, video clip of this machining. The machining doesn't really take too long, it's just the, all this setup. I don't know, it took me about a day or so to make all this setup on this part. There, but there's 55 uh, of them, so the job is going to work out alright. So that's it both ends done and I can open the chuck up and get the part out like you see without moving the tail support so here's a little better close-up of what I was doing there like I say I think this parts a needle in a solenoid or some sort I, I'm not sure So thanks for watching.